Please welcome Chairman of NBC Universal Studio Group and Chief Content Officer and Vital Voices Board Member, Dame Donna Langley. When she was 22 years old, Aya Shebi emerged as a leading voice in Tunisia's Jasmine Revolution, which sparked the Arab Spring and toppled a dictator who'd been in power ever since Aya was born. For this proud pan-African feminist, changing the old guard comes naturally. When Aya looks at young Africans at a continent with the youngest population in the world, she sees the most connected, innovative, and determined generation yet. She sees leaders who are ready to shape the future, and she wants to help them do it. Aya created the Nala Feminist Collective to foster young women's leadership in Africa, and at 30, she became the African Union's first ever special envoy on youth, tasked with bringing voices and interests of young people into the highest decision-making bodies. But as so many women know, being the first isn't exactly easy, especially if your mission is to make more room for women to follow. As much as Aya has had to push for change, she knows the struggle will be worth it because she believes that a young Africa can change the world. On behalf of Vital Voices, it is my great pleasure and honor to present the Global Leadership Award to Aya Shebi. <laughs> What's up, Vital Voices? I am a proud African woman. And like many girls at an early age, I was abused. Like many revolutionaries, I was arrested, blacklisted. I've seen life bullets on the front line. Like many young diplomats in multilateral systems, I've been mansplained and excluded. But guess what? I rise. Yeah. <laughs> Against all odds, I carry my bruises with pride. I am unapologetic for being patriarchy's nightmare. Now I have one task, and one task only, the liberation of African women and girls. Dream with me. Imagine a generation of women who lead from a place of love and courage, who occupy the parliamentary seats we deserve, who change the political discourse from apartheid occupation to freedom, and seating made privilege to be the legislators of our own bodies. Imagine us in masses, increasing in number and influence as female Pan-African leaders. That's when I can retire. <laughs> but until then, we are already driving Africa's transition into a new model of leadership that is democratic, that is feminist, and that is decolonial. For this dream to manifest, we need two things. One. The world should stop bullying Africa. We don't need white colonial saverism or entitled expert. Actually, we are the experts. But if the world really wants to help, then move money and power into the hands of young progressive feminist leaders. And two, we need Mandela's generation to listen and co-lead with us because I do believe the future of leadership in Africa must be intergenerational. To young women, I know they tell us often, wait for your turn, climb the ladder of politics, 
suffer. But guess what? We are not waiting for permission. This is our time. Now is the time to claim our right to lead. So let's do this. Thank you.